Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I am posting one video every single day up until Christmas. That is 25 videos. We are on day 17. <laughs> we are on day 17. If you missed any of my previous videos, make sure to check those out. Trust me, you do not want to miss out. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on your post notifications as I'm doing tons and tons of giveaways throughout the month of December. That being said, I am doing a Grinch inspired nail design. I'm bringing back the hand painted nail art. That is my number one obsession when it comes to nails, but I do try to make all my videos very, very beginner friendly. So this kind of is a little bit complicated to do with hand painted nail art, but I try and try and try to simplify it as best as possible. I wanted to incorporate something that will remind us of 2020 because we can all agree that this has been the craziest year by far. So I did add a little extra touch. I hope you guys appreciate that. That being said, I am doing a giveaway on today's video. I am going to be sending one lucky winner some Kiara Skype goodies. I'm going to be sending two all-in-one powders, one sprinkle on glitter, and three colored gel polishes with one of their top coats as well. How to enter. I normally ask you guys a question and all you have to do to enter is comment your answer down below in the comment section and you will automatically be entered. The question for today's video is, what is one thing you are looking forward to in 2021? Do not forget to check back in the community section of my channel. That is where I'm announcing the giveaways. That is where you claim your prize. So make sure you guys are staying tuned on my community post. That being said, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Now let's get right into it. Getting right into today's video, I did go ahead and apply the McCart tips. They are full sculpted and pre-shaped in the square shape, which makes an easy transition to any shape that you would like. So I went ahead and applied those. Now I am going in with this really pretty green glitter. You will see that I did apply a little bit of clear acrylic and then I'm just going in and layering that chunky green glitter. I'm going in and making sure that I'm patting it nicely. I am going to be doing tons of different layers on this nail. So I wanna make sure that I'm keeping the nail relatively thin while still getting the good amount of glitter on there. So as you need, just layer on a little bit more. If you need a little bit more clear acrylic, go ahead and apply that as well. Now I am just pushing that up very, very gently to create kind of an ombre. And then I'm going in and doing that same thing on the index finger. I'm adding a little bit of clear acrylic. This is from Not Polish. And I'm just applying that to the very tip as that is where I'm going to be placing the acrylic. This is going to work as my base, as my adherent for that loose glitter. And then again, I just start layering on that glitter very, very carefully. I'm trying to cover as much of the clear as possible. I am taking a very, very small amount of frozen margarita chunky glitter from Profiles. It is definitely more on the lime green neon side compared to Resting Grinch Face. It is so pretty and I wanted to apply a little bit of that just to give it a little bit more dimension and just add a little pop of bright green. So I'm just layering that on there as well with a little bit of clear acrylic using a very small amount. 
Now I am taking Neon Ninjas from Not Polish and applying that right over top of that glitter. I'm going to be doing kind of a three-toned ombre, except this is going to work as my transition color into that glitter. So it makes it a little bit more subtle and it just makes the transition a little bit better. So I'm applying that right above that glitter, kind of blending it into the glitter and then blending it up near the cuticle area. Very, very gentle patting motions. I'm not messing around with it too much because that can make it worse. So I'm just going in with Hiki Nude from Not Polish. And then that is going to be my nude color. So I'm just applying that and then blending it down into that really pretty pastel green. Another bead near the cuticle area and pushing it up gently into the cuticle. And then I start blending it down very, very gently with very light pressure. And then I am layering just a little bit more glitter over top of that light green. This just helps kind of blend it all together nicely. I did go ahead and start encapsulating these nails before I got to the ring finger and the middle finger just because I'm not going to be encapsulating those two nails. So I figured I would get it out of the way. So I'm just taking my clear acrylic from Not Polish and applying that over top of the surface. Definitely focusing more on that glitter area just because I want to protect it a little bit more. And then I'm adding that thickness that I want for that set. I'm taking Peaky Nude once again and applying that on the ring finger and the middle finger. I'm taking a medium sized bead of acrylic and applying that near the tip. And then I'm going ahead and patting it gently into place and starting to blend it out. Very, very light patting motions helps kind of place that where you want to without putting too much effort into it. This product is very, very blendable, very easy to work with. So if you do too much to it, it will probably be a little bit more complicated. So definitely recommend just be gentle with it. Use light patting motions and just let the product kind of work on its own. If you have your liquid to powder ratio down perfect, you should be good to go. It's not going to need too much effort when applying the acrylic. I'm just going in and applying that again and I make sure I clean the sides frequently so that it doesn't overspill and I don't have to do too much filing at the end. Now near the cuticle I'm very very gentle and I make sure that I hold the finger in a downward position and again you see my child's little finger. <laughs> I swear he always makes his appearance randomly.
Once everything is nice and dry, I am going in and filing using my e-file from Kiara Sky. I have her at about eight to 9,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using the Kiara Sky 5-in-1 bit. I love these bits. This one is medium grit. Definitely love it for finished filing. So then I started filing the ring finger and it was a little bit too soft. So I went ahead and tapped it with my finger and it definitely wasn't dry all the way. So I went ahead and went back to the index finger as I know that one was already dry. So make sure your stuff is dry before you go in with a lot of pressure because you can really mess up that nail and then you'll have to go back in with your acrylic. So you definitely do not want to create more work for yourself. Now that I know these other nails are dry, I'm going in and again filing that nail. I go around the cuticle area very gently and then I go over top of the entire surface. I'm going in with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file, filing the sides, making sure it is nice and straight. Love, love, love these files. I talk about them all the time. Just going in and filing the nails into straight perfection. As I am doing more of a square shaped nail, I don't have to do too much filing as I'm not trying to taper them in a lot. Again, repeating that on the rest of the nails. I'm flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective and then I'm just filing the shape into the perfect squared off shape. This helps look at the nails at a different angle which a lot of the time we will focus on our view and not realize that a different view can be different. So make sure you look at the nails from every angle. I'm constantly turning the finger back and forth just to make sure that I'm covering every area and everything is nice and smooth. Now I did buff the nails. I did use my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage. Now I'm just going in and cleaning the surface of the nail, prepping my nails for my nail art using a lint-free wipe and some swipe. Now I'm super excited because this is a first video that I get to do like intricate nail art using the Profiles Backstage gel paints. Oh my gosh, you guys. I love them. They're so pigmented. The colors are stunning. I just love them so much. So I'm really excited to be doing a video using those. I am taking their green color and their white color and just mixing up a good Grinch green in my opinion. And then I'm going ahead and starting off to outline the face or the head of Grinch. And it starts very small at the top and then the mouth area or cheeks is definitely bigger. So that's basically what I'm trying to mimic. And then I go ahead and start filling that in. My nail art brush is from Amazon. It is linked in my Amazon storefront. It is the one that comes with a pack of three. The one I use all the time is the blue color, as you can see in the video. It's my favorite one. I use it all the time. It's still going strong after four years, which I absolutely love. Now, don't forget to cure your gel layers whenever you feel it is necessary. I like to do most of the area that I'm going to be doing with the same color at the same time so I don't have to cure too many times and I basically just flash cure for like 10 to 15 seconds. Now I'm going in with their red color and I'm going to be doing the hat. If you see me pause a lot, that's basically how me drawing goes because a lot of the time I'll try to use a picture for reference or I try to remember what I'm doing. So you'll see me kind of pause a lot in between. I'm doing the Santa hat. I decided to add a little Santa hat on him 
and I'm just outlining it first and then coloring that in. Now of course I did cure that in the light and now I'm going in with white gel paint and just doing the white fluffy cotton areas of that hat. I'm not doing this very precisely. I don't know if you guys can notice, but I'm honestly just sketching it on there, filling it in. I'm not trying to be a perfectionist with this design. So I know that it is not the best, but I didn't want to go too much into detail because I was basically gonna cover his face. So now I place that in the light once again. Now I'm taking their black gel paint and adding those tiny little details that make a drawing so much better. So I'm basically outlining the hat and then adding tiny little creases so it looks like the hat is folded over. And I am outlining a lot of the design. So I started off with the hat and then went around the white and then the face or the head as well. Now I added a little bit of details on the sides to kind of make it look like he was actually furry. And then I'm going in with white and doing the eyes. I know I talk a lot about not layering color too much, but when it came to this design, it was going to be way too hard for me to try to go around the eyes without just overlapping them. So I figured I would go ahead and just do my green base and then my white as it is very minimal and because these gel paints are very pigmented, I knew it was going to cover perfectly fine. So I'm just doing the outline of the eyes, placed that in the light, and then I'm going in with all the details that really bring out his eyes and, you know, the kind of mad look that he has. I'm going in and drawing the lovely mask for 2020 vibes. <laughs> so I'm going in and just doing an outline of that in white. And then I'm going to be filling it in. So I did do the little strings on the side, brought it out, and then I started drawing out the shape of the mask. So you can see that I didn't add black to the outline where the mask was going to be because that for a fact 
I did not want to struggle trying to cover up the white with the black because I knew I was going to go over top of that with white. So I'm just filling it in very, very lightly. And then I'm going to be placing that in the light before going on to my next step. Now, once it's out of the light, I am going in with a very light blue. I did use their blue gel paint and mixed a ton of white in it to get it very, very light and subtle. Now I'm just kind of doing like a shadowed effect to give it that illusion of an actual mask. And then I'm doing kind of those tiny little creases as well. Of course, I placed that in the light. Now I'm going in and outlining the mask. This kind of brings it all together. I feel like outlining does make a huge difference. If you're not going to be doing shading, outlining definitely makes a simple drawing so much better. I'm just adding one side of the mouth that you would actually be able to see through the mask. Kind of give it that grinning look. And then I'm going to be writing 2020 on the mask. So I'm doing this very carefully because it's so small. Still using that same brush. And I low-key was really scared to mess this up because it's so tiny. So funny story, at this point, my son came over and was complimenting my Grinch. And then he mentioned that the eyes were actually yellow with red dots. So I asked him if he wanted me to change them and he was like, yeah, mommy. And so, of course, I did that for my baby. I went ahead and did yellow over top and then just red little dots. And honestly, it made it look so much better. So now I'm just going in and doing his suit in red. Now I am kind of annoyed because I realized when I was editing this video that I did not outline his suit. So I feel like it kind of makes it look a little off, but I mean, it worked out. Um, I'm not mad at it completely. <laughs> so once that was done, I went ahead and placed that in the light. I'm going to be doing a string light design on the ring finger. Very, very simple. I wanted to keep it relatively simple, so I'm going in and doing a swirled effect right here and then just bringing down the light. This is going to be technically the cord, and this will be a nice guide for me to draw the little light bulbs. Going in with red, green, blue, and yellow, and I'm just starting off with one color, basing them out kind of wherever I feel like they should be. And then I take the next color and do the exact same thing. So I'm doing kind of a teardrop, water drop effect. Not really. I don't know what you would call that. Um, and I'm just kind of placing them randomly. I realized a little bit late that I was not recording, but I did include a little snippet of it. So I'm just doing tiny little lines on those light bulbs to give it that like shining effect. And then placing that in the light. Do not forget to cure. 
Now I'm going in with Gloss It from Not Polish and applying that on the index finger and my pinky. Very thin layer of that, making sure that I'm covering the entire surface. And then I'm going in with Matte It from Not Polish and applying that on the ring finger and the middle finger. You guys know I love to use matte on designs like this. It just makes the design pop so much more. And you get a way better picture with no glare. So that's kind of why I lean for that. Make sure you're placing that in the light for at least one minute. I like to do two just to be a little bit safe. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Question for today's video. I'm gonna kill him. He's taking a nap, so he's not gonna answer the phone. Okay how to enter.